Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us today. We're just going to give it a minute for, to let any other students trickle in and then we'll get started. All right, so I think we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone, welcome. Um, if we haven't met before, my name is Cheryl Rosenberg and I'm a assistant director and career advisor in the Career Center at Tufts. And I um, work with all students and I also work with students interested in um, career paths, particularly in social impact, which as we know can intersect almost any field. Um, and so I'm really happy to have here today joining us four representatives from different AmeriCorps programs. Um, and actually Sue is on the call too, so I'm gonna have her introduce herself. Hi there, I'm Sue Atkins, Associate Director of Employer Relations, and I work with all the employers that support Tufts um, across different industries, but specifically social impact education and the areas nonprofit that Cheryl works with. So I'll be on the chat today. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and I'll be monitoring that throughout the session. And we'll have time later on before the close of the session too to answer your questions. So thanks for being here. Um. So like I said, we have joining us today four representatives from different AmeriCorps programs, and I'm gonna have them introduce themselves and the programs that they represent in a minute. Um, but first, I, I just wanted to give a, a broad overview and the four of you, if you wanna add anything, please do. Um, but AmeriCorps is a voluntary civil society program that engages adults in service work with a goal of helping others and meeting critical needs in the community. Um, you know, AmeriCorps is a really great stepping stone for your future. There are a lot of Tufts students and Tufts alumni I know that do AmeriCorps programs at various points in their journey. Um, and there's really a wide range of AmeriCorps programs in which volunteers can participate. And that's one of the goals here today is to um, provide some exposure and information about some of the, the different variety of programs that um, you can participate in through AmeriCorps. Um, so I'm going to have our, our guests introduce themselves, and if I can just ask you to also provide a very brief, um, just an overview of your program. Um, so maybe, Crystalyn, we can start with you. All right, delighted to start. I'm Crystalyn Dupree. I am this. I'm the Vista Outreach and Recruitment Specialist with AmeriCorps, and overall, AmeriCorps. <clears throat> excuse me, our mission is to empower communities to to tackle, excuse me, tackle local challenges. And these challenges could possibly be in education, economics, uh, helping veterans and military families, as well as disaster services, help, and other environmental stewardship pro projects. Nina, do you want to go next? Yeah, uh, so I'm Nina Pepper, Program Director for the Massachusetts Historic Preservation Corps. Um, and we address the needs in Massachusetts as they relate to preservation, um, specifically in state and national parks. So we train, train young adults in the preservation trades specifically. Um, so carpentry, masonry, window restoration, um, the hands-on part of preservation. Um, and then we send them out into the parks to do, uh, to do some good service. Kyla? Hi, my name is Kyla Graves and I'm the program coordinator for AmeriCorps Legal Advocates of Massachusetts, which is run out of South Coastal County's Legal Services. We're a full-time statewide program that places 36 members in legal aid offices to act as paralegals and advocates. By embedding advocates into legal aid programs, AmeriCorps Legal Advocates of Massachusetts opens doors to justice, invigorates organizations, and cultivates the next generation of public leaders. 
And last but certainly not least, Emily. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Toman. Um, I'm the recruitment coordinator and also alum for uh, College Advising Corps, Boston University. Our organization's mission is to increase the number of first-gen low-income underrepresented students who enroll in and complete college or higher education. And it's nice to meet everyone. Uh, great. Well, thank thank the four of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Talk more about your programs. Um, you know, can each of you talk a little bit more about what core members do in each of the various programs and really what the experience is like? Is it okay if I start? Yes, please. Okay, okay. Tell us well, about Vista. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, say what now? Tell us about Vista. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, our AmeriCorps Vista projects, um, the network of nonprofit organizations, faith-based organizations, as well as other public public organizations that are um, <clears throat> events and causes that you care about. Specifically, our Vista members are paired with nonprofits to work on anti-poverty initiatives. So it could be um, you're supporting those organizations to ensure that they're able to continue with their mission. So I'll get into a little bit more specifically about what that looks like in a minute, but that's just the gist of what you could do as an AmeriCorps VISTA member. Anyone wanna jump in next? Uh, sure, I can. Uh, so for AmeriCorps Legal Advocates, um, advocates are first supervised by legal professionals and receive training on client-centered communications, legal ethics, cultural competency, or trauma-informed advocacy. And our members do a wide variety of legal tasks for their partner organizations in many different areas of law. Some of those areas include housing law, immigration law, or benefits law. And common tasks include client interaction, screening clients for eligibility, legal research, drafting documents, and representing clients in administrative hearings. Well, I can go. Um, so our members, uh, we start our program year uh, with training sessions. So it's five weeks of hands-on training um, we do a preservation foundations course just so you can like learn the language of preservation. Uh, and then we jump into our hands-on stuff. So we do our masonry training, window restoration and carpentry. So we have a shop here on site um, where members serve um, and do, do a lot of our projects. Um, and then as far as service, yeah, they, they work in state and national parks um, and they complete uh, lots of different projects. Um, a big one, I've already said it, but window restoration. So we, we go to buildings, we take the windows out, um, bring them into our shop, take the paint off, replace the glass. We do all that kind of, all those steps to that process. Um, repairing brick walls, um, repairing brick like walkways uh, at historic sites. Um, yeah, just kind of all that like preservation maintenance kind of hands-on uh, stuff. And we do serve in small crews. Uh, and then we also offer the opportunity to work, uh, serve independently um, twice a year. So members can go off and do kind of whatever they want uh, by themselves. Um, whether they've made a connection with someone in a park or uh, they have really connected to a particular project or skill, uh, then they can pursue that kind of independently uh, for, for about a month, two months. Uh, for CACBU, um, College Advising Corps BU, um, essentially uh, we we recruit 30. Is there an echo? I'm so sorry. Is, are the people hearing that too? Okay, I don't know. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know if it's my laptop. Um, but anyway, um, so we recruit 36 advisors to serve um, on site at all the BPS, most of the BPS high schools, and then uh, Somerville High School and Kip Academy in Lynn, as well as Malden High School. So you are paired with a guidance counselor um, or sometimes a college counselor, depending on what the school's uh, kind of format is. Uh, and you work directly with them to support um, kind of 
any sort of the post-secondary or college uh, application process. Um, so that can mean one-on-one -on -one meetings with students. For myself, that was what a lot of the bulk of the time was spent doing. Um, but it also means, um, you know, creating workshops, thinking about other initiatives um, to increase college going culture and um, also like thinking about family engagement, all the other aspects that um, kind of go into students post-secondary planning. So um, it is college, tends to be more college application heavy, but that isn't just for your colleges, that's to your colleges. And then also some um, kind of alternative pathways um, or just job related fields. Um, so the, the bulk of the time is spent directly in the schools, not like offsite. So you're, you're there, five days a week, um, interacting with students, really getting into the school community um, and doing that work. Awesome. And Crystalline, is there anything that you wanted to add about um, AmeriCorps VISTA and what that looks like for, for students? Yes, it could be, um, as I said, our VISTA members will actually be sorting, supporting anti-poverty missions and what it looks like will vary on what that organization could need. Uh, supporting this organization could mean possibly doing, volu doing uh, re volunteer recruitment, grant writing, um, um, developing, a, developing a communications plan as well as creating, creating partnerships uh, specifically I, I have a video, a uh, day in the life of AmeriCorps member, and this AmeriCorps member, she's actually serving with a New Hampshire project, and in this project, um, in this project, she is developing partnerships. Uh, what I can really appreciate about the video is she's literally, literally walking you through a day in her life as an AmeriCorps member. Um, she's going in to talk with a grocery store owner about keeping, helping to keep their food pantry stock. Um, her part of her other services in this in this particular program, uh, she's doing some research and recommending resources to stakeholders in the program that will enhance the program to ensure that this food pantry is, a, is around as long as it needs to be. And she's also talking about creating, that she's creating, creating promotional uh, media for this organization. So she's really excited because she's saying, I did not have graphic design experience when I came in here, but they told me what they needed. And I was able to use Canva to put together media for this organization to share and talk about their program. Um, just cut me, cut me off whenever, whenever you need to, Cheryl, because I get, I get really excited and uh, talking about what I, what our members are doing. But again, she's creating partnerships, doing uh, some researching and recommendations to the stakeholders. Um, as well as keeping the food pantry stocked, and specifically, what this organization, uh, this this uh, food food pantry, it's the uh, New Hampshire. Uh, I don't want to mess up the name. It's the the food insecurity initiative um, in New Hampshire, and it's actually on the campus of one of the one of the colleges there. But I can't tell you specifically what this organization was looking for in their AmeriCorps member. They were looking for communication skills, education skills, general skills. That could mean computer skills or just good with, with talking to people, strong work ethic. You'll see in the video where she's sharing her story, she tells you, I was so nervous. I'm, no, no, she not was. She tells you, I'm about to go in to talk to this grocery store owner about helping us to keep our food pantry stocked. I'm so nervous about going in here to do this, but I started this and I'm here for this and I'm doing this. That's the work ethic that the organization was looking for. And they were also looking for teamwork. And she let you know, this is what, uh, she, she's serv serving safely. All of our members that are serving are serving safely. And um, I'll be sure to get my contact information to you so you can get some more information about uh, how our members are, how our members are serving safely, but those are in general what um, what AmeriCorps, our Vista sponsors, are looking for in their members. And some people say, "Well, 
that's not telling me what exactly, you know, what I need to major in to be able to do something like this. If you, there are top three, top three top skills that our VISTA members, our, excuse me, that our AmeriCorps members serving with VISTA projects ha have their top three skills. And I can tell you from experience because I actually serve, but those are, cha they're champions for sustainable solutions. They crave real world skills. And I'm telling you what I know for sure, because I serve these real world skills that you'll gain in serving they look good on your res resume. I'll get into that a little more later, but they look amazing on your resume. And also, there our AmeriCorps members are uh, serving in all AmeriCorps programs. They are also focused can be focused on building a career. So there's a program out there for you. Wonderful. So just to clarify for any students that might have been wondering or uncertain, AmeriCorps VISTA members are placed in organization, nonprofit organizations to fill any role or capacity building uh, responsibilities that would be really helpful to that organization for that year. And I'm so glad that you started talking about what, um, you know, skills and qualities um, both AmeriCorps and some of the VISTA sponsors are looking for. Um, Nina, might you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what are, what are you looking for um, for your program? And actually, I forgot to say this before you jump in, Nina. Um, we, we are putting a bunch of helpful links, including um, the day in the life that Crystalline mentioned in the chat box for all of you. So make sure you check that out. All right, go ahead, Nina. Yeah, yeah, this is a question we get a lot from members who are interested in applying um, because they see the types of projects that we do. And they're like, oh, no, I don't have any carpentry experience. I, you know, I probably shouldn't apply. Um, but we provide all of that training up front. So we don't require any kind of hands-on uh, preservation or related experience. Uh, what we look for in a core member is someone who's interested in learning. That's truly like number one. I'm reading through your application and I just want to know that you're excited about learning the skills. Um, yeah. And like maybe excited about working on a team because we do that a lot too. Uh, but we don't interact a lot with the public. So you're not going to be like teaching or uh, you don't need to be a good public speaker or anything like that. It's, it's very hands-on. It's very like trades and skills focused. Um, so yeah, you really just need to be interested in that. Um, but we don't require any experience. Yeah. Wonderful. Kyla and then Emily, maybe you can tell us more about uh, what you look for in candidates for your programs. Yeah, I can. I mean, it's very similar to what Nina said for AmeriCorps Legal Advocates of Massachusetts. You don't need any hard legal skills uh, to apply for our program. That's not what we're looking for. We are looking for someone with a desire to learn. We're looking for someone who has some of these soft skills like crisis management, flexibility, coachability, um, and also a desire to help those most in need of legal services and who can't necessarily access them with like hard cash. Um, there are some things that are desirable for some of our partners, like language skills in, sport, in Spanish or Portuguese. Those can be helpful for some of our partners, but they're not necessarily necessary for all positions. Uh, and the only other thing is that we do require a bachelor's degree. So if you are a senior and you're graduating in May, this is a great opportunity for you. Uh, for College Advising Corps, we um, operate kind of, I'm mean, gonna I feel like I'm repeating a lot of what everybody else has already said, but um, in terms of the tangible, like hard requirements, we do also like, um, we also require a bachelor's degree. Um, and the other requirement is that you've graduated from undergrad relatively recently because we really operated in a near peer model. So we really want our students to um, feel as though that they can connect with you. And we found that um, being close in age and also um, experience. So anyone who, um, it's not required that you were also first gen low income, um, or an underrepresented student, but um, those are obviously qualities, um, just lived experiences that you bring with you that um, you can kind of utilize to help connect with our students and really understand the process and 
um, that college application process and troubleshoot. Um, those are all things that we really um, we really like our candidates to have. Um, but broadly speaking, the most important thing is um, you know that you're you're willing to learn and that you're um, you're you're able to be flexible to be to work in um, in fast paced oftentimes fast-paced environments with a lot of different types of people um, and how being able to kind of manage that. Um, and then also just having a commitment to um, our, our organization's mission um, and understanding the nuances that that exist um, that exist within it. Um, so I think for us, those are kind of the priorities in terms of actual knowledge on the college application process and colleges within the area. Um, it's not a requirement to know all of those things. Um, you get trained pretty extensively the summer before you start. Um, so you don't need to know everything there is to know about the Common App or the FAFSA or Naviance. Um, some of these are probably things you haven't thought about since you probably applied to college. I know that was the case for me. Um, so yeah. Uh, bachelor's degree, near peer, and just willingness to learn and care for the work that we do. Now for, for students who are um, considering applying to any of these programs, is there anything for any of your programs that really makes a candidate stand out or really just anything unique about the application process you'd want students to know? I guess I can speak on um, our, since I just went. Um, so our application process is, um, there are three rounds to it. So it starts with a one-on-one -on -one interview and then moves to a group interview, which is more scenarios based. Um, the first one is just kind of a get to know you interview. And the second inter group interview is a scenario situation where we see how you would respond to different scenarios that we give you. Um, and then the third round is when you get to actually interview with the potential school you'd be working at. Um, and we and that's when we try to do our best to match you with um, the right fit. So it's not like you're just getting randomly placed in, in schools. There are schools that you, um, like that match your preferences. Um, and then the other thing I would just say is, um, yeah, la language skills, not, not necessary, but they definitely are being more and more requested by our schools, um, specifically Spanish, um, Haitian Creole, um, Cantonese. Um, and so that is something that can help, but I would again emphasize um, that when we talk to you, it's just you're, like we want to know that this is the job that you are applying for and like want um, and so if we can see that and your willingness to to be involved uh, meaningfully then then that's really our kind of most important quality. And as far as applying for for uh, our VISTA opportunities there are four steps I encourage you to go to americorps.gov backslash backslash vista. You should probably it'll probably come up in your um, in your chat screen. But once you're there, there are four steps for applying to a vista opportunity. First, you will search for that opportunity, and after searching for that opportunity, you'll create a profile, and that profile is just general information about you. And then there's cr creating the application portion of that profile. Um, and that'll answer specific questions about the opportunity that you're applying for. One more step, that last step is submitting that application. So creating the application and submitting the application are two different steps because we've gotten um, potential members to complete the application and say, oh, I applied, I applied, I complete the application. No, you have not completed the application until you hit submit. So so don't leave it floating out there. But um, we're going to be hosting um, um, webinars and I'm going to be sure to share, share this information, our webinar information uh, with Tufts to share with you about signing up for those webinars, talking, talking more specific, going, going deeper uh, into the benefits and value of serving, as well as answering other questions you might have. And can you talk about, I know I'm wondering, I know some of our students are wondering, um, 
Is there a common trajectory of a core member from your program? You know, are there some common opportunities you see alum pursuing? Um, and can you talk a little bit about where core members go after? Sure, I'll gladly talk about Vista first. Uh, common, common trajectory. Uh, a great majority of our AmeriCorps members are recent college graduates, and that is because they know the value of service. Um, they are using their year of service as, as a bridge year between college and career. Uh, oftentimes, I say a lot, uh, students oftentimes graduate with the experience that employ, no, they graduate with the degree that employers are looking for, but they don't have the experience possibly that they're looking for. Well, AmeriCorps service is that opportunity to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to get that experience. Um, and I'm going to share a blog with you about a service member that actually said, uh, this was my bridge year opportunity. This was the bridge year opportunity for me. This is why I did it. This is how I did it. Um, and our AmeriCorps members, 80% of our AmeriCorps members say that their service has benefited their career. And um, we, uh, we share um, eons with our service members. EON stands for Employers of National Service because employers are looking for our AmeriCorps alum. They are specifically coming to us saying, how can we get these job opportunities to your AmeriCorps alumni? So, so much so that we actually had to create a network called EON's Employers of National Service um, because, so they can specifically share job opportunities uh, with, with you. And also there's the NCE benefit. NCE benefit stands for non-competitive eligibility. And non-competitive eligibility is in applying for federal jobs. It doesn't guarantee you the job, but it does make the hiring process a lot easier. Take a bow because I am an example of the uh a bit how the eon not eons i'm just excited <laughs> but how nce can benefit our service members it makes the application and the hiring process a lot easier but please remember that if you decide to serve with americorps specifically because you want the nce benefit non-competitive eligibility benefit um nce benefit is applicable to members that have completed VISTA service for a year, not part, not summer associates, our VISTA summer associates, but uh, VISTAs that have completed a year of service or Peace Corps. Those are the two, only two organizations that the NCE benefit is applicable, app, applicable to. So if that's what specifically what you're looking for, uh, that's the opportunity that you wanna check out. Um, I can also talk a little bit about uh, common trajectories for our members. Um, for AmeriCorps legal advocates, uh, the most common trajectory is law school after, it, after completing year of service. Uh, many of our members apply to law school every year. Uh, that being said, we also have many members apply to other graduate school programs, increasingly social work, uh, because they notice that there are other systemic issues that need addressing that are other than just clients' legal needs. Um, and that's something they wanna focus on instead. Um, otherwise, if they're looking to get employment instead of go to school, many members look for paralegal type employment. Uh, we have a alumni at the ACLU as a paralegal, for example, um, or just generally working in nonprofits. Um, also our application is actually gonna open March 1st and it will be available on our website. And if Tufts has Handshake, right? Yes. We'll, we'll post on Handshake as well. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I can talk a bit too. Um, this is something that I'm really excited about. Our core members uh, land jobs pretty quickly after they uh, leave our program, um, typically in the preservation field, but also just kind of parks in general. 
Um, so we have quite a few members who work for National Park Service, a couple who work for state parks uh, in their home states, um, and then a few folks who work for window restoration companies, so private preservation companies, um, and then a member who is a property coordinator for Preserve Rhode Island, um, which is a nonprofit for the whole state of uh, Rhode Island. Um, and it definitely depends on like what you come to the program with as well. So like that last member that I mentioned, she has a master's in preservation and this like hands-on experience just boosted her application uh, way above everyone else that she was competing against. Um, another fun thing that I like to say, uh, the preservation field pays pretty well. Um, so members who do leave the program and land a job are typically starting $20, $20 an hour um, if they're hourly. Uh, and that's starting. Uh, so that's like window restoration. You can start out um, about 18, 20 an hour um, or more, depending on how much time you spent on that particular skill in the program, things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we provide a lot of certifications. Um, so that goes a long way on the resume. Um, first aid, OSHA, um, occupational health, and like lead RRP. So like lead, um, lead paint, getting rid of it and avoiding it and things like that. Um, it's a big deal for, for kind of the trades. So, um, and then we also provide PLC, which is Public Land Corps. It's a hiring authority with, um, with, the, with the government. Um, and so positions that are posted with the PLC hiring authority, um, your name will get bumped up to the top of that list, which is kind of a fun thing for, especially for folks who wanna work for um, Department of Interior. And I can just quickly add on. So um, most of our alum who leave the pro um, who've done CAC and finish um, will go on to do grad school. So pretty much any type of grad school we've had like law school, PhD programs, social work, um, a lot of different options. Uh, med school, um, so a lot of different options, um, and then. Uh, another common one is people will go into other nonprofit organizations that um, we're often in contact with because our network is pretty, being in schools allows you to network with a lot of um, different, different people. Um, and then other people will also go into teaching um, either in BPS or um, like other school districts. Uh, so that again provides kind of like an in, um, if you're interested in getting more involved in that. Um, yeah, those are the most common ones. Fantastic. Crystal, and you briefly, you mentioned um, the summer, VISTA summer program, and I'm wondering for some of our students here who are not currently seniors, if you could just briefly talk about what um, what the summer program is about. Yes, yes, I definitely sure. Can. Thank you. Thank you for calling on me because as, as uh, other others were talking, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't say that. And I didn't say that. Um, uh, Ky 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 Kyla, Kyla mentioned uh, debt or um application dates. I should say that our application dates happen on a rolling basis because we have thousands of opportunities and they all, of course, have their own own timeline. So uh, applications are being accepted at all times of the year. Specifically to answer your question, Cheryl, about summer opportunities, our summer associates is what we love to call them. This is actually a perfect time. Looking at the date, it is the 18th. Our summer applications uh, often are posted at the end of this month. So perfect timing. Yeah, you, you meant to do that, Cheryl. Thank you for that. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, our summer opportunities range anywhere from four to um four to four between four to ten about ten weeks or so and they are they are full-time uh full-time of course meaning about about 40 hours a week but the difference between our summer opportunities and our year-long opportunities other than the time of year and length of time uh, is the fact that in summer opportunities you'll actually be working hands-on for example if you are working in a um a mentoring program for uh, for children, uh, yeah, for, for children working a mentor program. Program, you would possibly actually be a mentor in that summer program. However, if you were serving in the same program, but if you were serving for a year, you will actually be a part of the development team for that mentoring program. Uh, development team, as far as 
ensuring that 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 mentoring prong uh, program is strong enough to survive. So you might be recruiting volunteers uh, for that summer program. But um, all of our service members, no matter what length of time you serve, there is an education award. Uh, yes, you do have the option to uh, choose the education award. If you serve during the summer, it will be prorated. If you serve for a year, it's actually a little more than $6,000 right now. So if you just serve for a summer, it'll be prorated. Uh, but a perk about serving for the summer is if you choose the education award, when you go back to school, that's money for school. And there are hundreds of institutions across the United States that will actually match that education award. So there's, there's that per perk. And then uh, all of our uh, service members also receive a living allowance, something that'll sustain you to help you live through, li li uh, help you continue to live live your life. Not 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 big time. You won't be traveling internationally uh, on your living allowance, uh, but but it will just support and sustain you through your your service or your time of service. Fabulous, and thanks for for touching on the. Um... The, service, the stipend as well as the education award. I know that's some things that students have questions about. Mm -hmm. um, I know that not all of you, but a few of you were core members yourself. And I was wondering if you could share with us just a little piece of um, your experience and how it's really informed what you've done since, um, since your time in service. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go ahead. If you look behind me here, that is actually I served as a Vista member two times, both in Tennessee. It's not a requir requirement to serve two times. Just worked out for me. Just worked out for me that way. But in the photograph that you see behind me is actually my last year uh, in Vista service with the program called Bridges to Belmont. Emily, I have to thank you for describing your program because actually what you do in your program is actually what I was doing uh, in the Bridges to Bel Belmont program. It was a, a college resource and the picture that you see behind me is for the summer intensive that I worked with my co-Vista uh, to organize. We worked with high school students, uh, underrepresented underrepresented stu students in universities. And we wanted these students to see that college is accessible for them. And what we were actually doing after a great speech, uh, because we, we got a standing, standing ovation from high school students. So that was serious, that touched my heart. But after a speech in this photo here, we had our students to create a vision board, um, just, just to manifest the the things that they that were on their mind, their goals, and um, and also a part of this, we developed a uh, ACT workshop that students would feel comfortable being able to take the test, knowing how they can study for the test, if you if we can call it that, but just how to prepare and such for the, for the test and know that college is accessible, accessible to them. This is what you need to know to be able to apply. This is how to apply. Uh, we talked about financial aid and just different, offering different resources um, for the students. Um, I'm happy to speak on my experience. So I did, in total, three years of AmeriCorps programming. The first was with City Year. Um, I did that as my gap year between high school and undergrad. So I was serving um, in a middle school in Seattle, um, Seattle, Washington on the West Coast, um, originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. So I don't know if the level of geographic knowledge, but anyway, um, I because I still struggle with East Coast geography. Anyway, um, so I did that and I think in terms of informing immediate, um, like I, I think it it really made my college experience um, more meaningful because I had a year to kind of mature a little bit, I think, and think more about what I wanted to study. Um, and then moving 
like after I graduated, I did two years with College Advising Corps at Boston University, which was where I went to undergrad. Um, and again, actually, you don't have to do two years. It's technically one year of service, and then you can have an option of doing a second year. Um, I went into the program knowing that I wanted to do it for two years. Um, and so I think as I was navigating, like those two years were really formative for me in terms of just job skills. I became like I was already organized, but I became way more organized. Um, and I thought a lot more about like what I wanted to do after I kind of left the two years. Cause um, it is like obviously a real, very much a real job. Um, but I think, and when you think of, you know, careers um, because it's, it has a natural ending to it. You have to think about what you're doing next. So for myself, um, actually that ended up being more school. Um, <laughs> so I'm currently in my PhD program uh, right now in social policy. So I would say my AmeriCorps experience really informed um, like and influenced that because I realized that policy work was uh, where, where I wanted to be. And I think that, um, I think that without my experience in AmeriCorps, I probably wouldn't have been accepted to programs. Um, and yeah, I, I yeah. So I, I just credit um, I credit AmeriCorps for um, for a lot of where I am t today. Um, it's, but yeah, especially. So that's kind of been my my path um, recently. So. And I just want to ask you before we um, open up to some time for questions from students, um, for students that want to know more or want to take the next step and start applying, what, what are the next steps that they should be taking? What are those application deadlines they should be aware of? Who should they be talking to? You know, what are the next steps for anyone interested? For anyone interested in applying for uh, VISTA opportunities, again, our applications are accepted on a rolling basis. If you don't see something, if you search for opportunity, if you see, don't find anything that you're interested in, give it a couple couple of weeks, come back because it's, it's bound to be there. And I see a question in the chat. Someone wanted to know, uh, do they have to create different applications for each opportunity that they apply to? You will create one profile but you have to create an application for each opportunity that you want to apply to. Um, it's, not, it's not drastically different, but if you see two opportunities that you're interested in, you'll actually have to submit an application to each of those, excuse me, each of those um, opportunities. So I hope I, I hope I answered that. And if you scroll scroll back up, you'll see uh, my contact information in there. So if I if I miss something here, please stay in touch with me. Yeah, our program is um, essentially the calendar year, uh, February to December. Um, our 2020 mem 2021 members actually start on Monday, um, but our 2022 application will open um, about September. Um, and the SCA website can be a lot. <laughs> it's essentially a job board um, for opportunities like this preservation core. Most of the opportunities are in conservation, uh, so natural resources, uh, natural biology, things like that. Um, but there's hundreds of opportunities. And it, it, it's probably similar to VISTA. You do the one big application and then you have to submit to all the different um, positions that you're interested in. Um, but lots of really cool opportunities. I think we're the best one, <laughs> but SCA offers uh, some really cool stuff and most of them are AmeriCorps, so. Fabulous. Like I said, our, uh, our application opens March 1st. We have a priority round. Uh, if you get it in by March 19th, you get like preference, but it's on a rolling basis after that fact. So until any, all positions are filled, you can apply. Um, I, I would just get your resume, your cover letter in order. I would start thinking about times you serve your community in some way, uh, since we have some questions on our application about that kind of experience that you've had. Um, and I'd also look into behavioral interviewing, what that's about how to answer questions uh, because we do a behavioral interview. Um, other than that, I might talk to an AmeriCorps member. If you can find an AmeriCorps member or an alumni to talk to, to find out what it's like for them, like 
and what living on the stipend means, what experience they get to determine if it's a right, the right opportunity for you, I'd heavily recommend that as well. Uh, yeah, everything that um, everyone has already said, and our application actually is currently open. Um, you can find it, um, and I can also provide a link, but it's um, posted on Handshake Idealist and then also on BU's own kind of job board, um, Silk Road. Um, and all you have to do is submit a resume and a cover letter. Um, there are three questions that we ask you to answer in the cover letter, um, which again, I can find that information and put it in the chat so you don't have to write it down. Um, and then after that, you'll be contacted for a first round interview and then the process continues. Um, I agree with um, what Kyla was saying. I think that being able to connect with current core members, core members or former core members um, to talk a little bit more about um, what the experience is like and, and whether or not it really fits um, what you're wanting to do uh, is, is important. And I think key to, um, key to having a good, a good experience. And I'm happy to talk to any of you um, if, you're, if you're interested in, in speaking. Awesome. And thank you each for sharing your contact information um, with students. That's very generous and folks can feel free to follow up directly. Um, we'll open it up for questions now, since that was such fabulous information. Student, um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to unmute yourself or you can type a question in the chat box. And while you're sort of formulating any thoughts you, you might have or want to ask, is there anything else that I, any of you want to add? Um, either a piece of advice for students or uh, maybe just something that students typically don't know about AmeriCorps or your program that you want them to know. And again, just feel free to type your questions in the chat box and we'll, we'll start answering. Um, sometimes students have questions about specifically how, how, to, how to make sure their application uh, looks good. Uh, what I would recommend, I, I actually apply. Of course, I started, so I had to apply. Um, there is contact information for our sponsors on the application. What I would encourage you to do, if you, well, first, if you have questions about the specific um, service opportunity, specific questions that relate to what you will be doing on site, um, there's, there's contact information for the VISTA sponsor. Uh, you can give them a call, just let them express your interest, find out, ask questions about the opportunity. And when you're creating your application, be sure you are saying, um, this is how you can help to meet that goal or whatever whatever they are possibly looking for in that. And also on this application, this profile that you're going to create, another way to make yourself stand out is you can create your own personal motivational statement. So be sure to talk about your passion for service and why you're looking to continue your service. So I, I, I think that that could uh, really, really help you in um, identifying, yes, this is something that I want to do so that they can see it. Something else about, um, I guess, with CACBU specifically. So like other AmeriCorps programs, we offer um, the living stipend as part of um, part of like compensation, I guess, if you want to put it, phrase it that way. Um, and then also the Ed Award is accessible to you as well upon completion of your service year. Um, I, just as a reminder, you can only like get the award twice. So if you have already done an AmeriCorps program like myself, just be aware of that. Um, but that is another benefit of it. And then with CACBU specifically, um, you can also have access, you're technically a BU employee. So you have access to um, BU healthcare, other BU benefits like tuition remission. Um, and I feel like there's one other thing, but just um, just know that that you do receive um, BU benefits. But I can go into the the ins and outs of what that actually means and the impact that has on um, the the stipend and, and other things because it's a little bit complicated. Um, and it was something that no one really told me. So I think if you're interested or want to know more about that, I'm also happy to to discuss. 
And I'll just throw in one, one more thing. Uh, at the time when I was preparing for my college graduation, I wish that I was in a place where you are now. I didn't know about AmeriCorps uh, prior to my graduation. I actually, how I, how I came upon AmeriCorps, uh, I was in, involved in a really bad car accident some years after my graduation. And I didn't, I was out of work for a while. So AmeriCorps was my transition back into the work world. And so I'm forever grateful to having AmeriCorps for, for that. But had I known about AmeriCorps when I graduated from college, it would have would have made my uh, career career transition from college um, from college a, a lot a lot smoother in just getting getting it down as far as my passion, what I wanted to do and what I was here for because uh, service is naturally just just in my heart and the second time I served it was when I relocated to another city I knew about AmeriCorps this time and being new to a city I was looking for a job kept hitting hitting walls and I said okay if I haven't found a job by this date I am serving as an AmeriCorps again because I know the power of service as far as building my rep building my network enhancing my resume and um and uh, just just developing developing career skills that employers were looking after, and I was I was here for all that. So, really glad that AmeriCorps was here for me too. And, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to add one more. So I know that there's um, obviously we represent. AmeriCorps programs. Um, and I think that it's important, something that I struggled with a little bit, especially as I got older, was um, the complexities that come with service um, and the, just a little bit of the challenges and how do we make service in AmeriCorps more equitable and what that actually means. So um, I think if you're wanting to have larger conversations about like structural, I, just like structural changes and like how um, different programs are trying to address that. Um, know that, I mean, I can only speak for CCBU, but I imagine it's happening in other organizations as well. Um, know that those conversations are happening. And if you're interested in getting involved in that, um, that's like you you can, at least in um, CCBU. So I, I know that there's a lot of complex feelings that often arise with, with service. And so I think, um, yeah, just know that for, for me, at least, I know that I like when people don't sugar sugarcoat that. Um, and, and so anyway, just wanted to add that point. Yes. And thank you. Thank you, Emily. You're uh, reminding me of everything. But um, as far as me ensuring my own sustainability and making it on uh, the living allowance as an AmeriCorps member, I actually I uh, worked part time as a uh, part time uh, adult education teacher. Um, so as far as serving with VISTA, speaking specifically for serving with the VISTA project, you are able to work uh, part-time as long as your part-time work doesn't interfere with your, with your VISTA service and it's approved by your VISTA supervisor. Great. Are there any other questions that anyone wants to ask to any of our panelists or just other things that you want to add? Awesome. Well, we'll stick around for the next few moments um, as you're filtering out. If you want to stick around to ask a question one on one or a question is just coming to you now, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, otherwise, just thanks everyone uh, for being here. Thank you for attending and thank, thank you, Nina, Kyla, Emily, and Crystal Lynn for sharing about your programs, about some of your personal experiences in the programs. Um, and we're so happy that you could join us today to share these opportunities. Yeah, thanks for having us. I, I see a question here Thank in the you. chat. I'm not sure who who is who is for what organization is best to answer it. Oh, let's see. This it looks like Emily is sharing. These are the questions. If you're applying to the College Advising Corps, they ask you to answer these three questions in your cover letter. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was confusing on my <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. That just, those questions are not listed. I'm looking at the job posting now. Those questions are not explicitly asked in the, in the job posting. That's, that's incredibly helpful. I know I am always talking to students who want to know what, what the application entails of before we open it. So that's super helpful.